In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, and St. Teresa, pray for us. And St. Anathasius, pray for us. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But anyway, so it really is a double betrayal of my mother to, first of all, cheat on my father with my married middle school church choir director at St. Nicholas Catholic Church in Gig Harbor, Washington. Then they flee to Oregon uh, separately, lying to each other's families, I'm sure, uh, moving within like a mile or two of each other in separate homes. But then my mom's going over his house and not coming home till the next day, pretending she went out early in the morning to get groceries. And I think we kind of know what's going on, you know. And, uh, and then she decides to marry this guy with a sea captain on the Malamette River. Can you believe this stuff? And this is all kind of while I'm in my 20s. And, or it started when I was 16 and then into my 20s and stuff. It's really it's really corrupting on a young woman. You know, especially since my mom was enforcing birth control on me when I was 14. It's like the minute I got my you-know-what, she wanted to take me to the witch doctor. Have me put on birth control. And this stuff isn't only damaging to the body. It's damaging uh you know, it can be damaging because of the hormone suppression and stuff to, to a woman's development. You know, it's really sick. But anyway, so it's kind of a double betrayal because after she cheats on my dad, then she steals the Asher away. Because um, she knows how to manipulate priests and lawyers and judges. You know, what more could you want in this life than to know how to manipulate family members, priests, judges, and lawyers? I mean, you kind of got the keys of Satan in your hand, right? And it, unfortunately, it doesn't show a lot of repentance, the double betrayal. It really shows a lack of repentance. So we got to pray a lot for her. We got to pray a lot for her soul. And we have to pray a lot for the reunification of the family in a way that's godly and just. She needs to go back to my father, you know, because she has the sacramental graces of perseverance in that marriage, no matter what. She's got the graces. That's a sacramental marriage. It's a sacrilegious, anti-Catholic, you know, uh, sodomy is what she's got now. And she knows it, but she just doesn't care. And that's, <laughs> a lot of Satanists will tell you when, you when you ask them flat out, well, why do you keep doing what you do? Or why do bad people do what they do? And the Satanists will say it's because they simply do not care. And that's what we've got. And they said that in the, in the prophecies too. They say people just don't know what sin is anymore. We have to pray for illumination of conscience before the illumination of conscience. We got to pray for people to see sin again see it anew see it for what it truly is because society certainly won't tell you and not even the priests i mean the lay people will tell you because they're steeped in sin themselves and i can tell you this there's more charity amongst strangers in the grocery store now than there really is amongst people who are praying the rosary every day and going to daily mass those are some of the most wicked people I have ever met and that's why I totally don't go to the church down the street where I used to go for two years daily mass because all I was was made fun of and lied to the whole time and and these these 80 year old women are trying to break my family apart anew and they're sitting talking it talking loudly in the in the church and so you can't do your thanksgivings they make it impossible for you to worship in there and that's why I think our Lord took me out of that church. And it's sick that there's more charity in in the grocery store among strangers. More politeness, legitimate smiles and welcomes and ha have a great day than there is in the Catholic church down the street from here. And it's sick that the priest, he's one of them. He defends their adultery. And it's sick also that they're in their 80s and 90s. Where does this come from? How is this possible? We wonder. Well, we got to do the penances for everyone. Not just for the people we like, but we have to do it for the whole world. It's not a choice. Well, it is a choice. But it, it's also a command. We love thy God, and we love our neighbor as ourselves. May God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.